then we're going to have the second component, which is going to be this item here. The accounts receivable will go in down, bringing the 1,170 down by 9,000 to 1,161. That's where we're at now on the accounts receivable on the trial balance. And then we got the subsidiary account and that's went from zero. It's going to go up by 9,000 to 9,000. And then we're taking it back down again, down by 9,000 to zero. So the accounts receivable subsidiary account went from uh, 9,000 credit back to zero. Then we debited it by this 9,000 here, bringing it back up to 9,000. And then we credited it by 9,000. This looks really repetitive because it just this is where we started and then it went up and then it went back down but this gives us a paper trail this item if we were to drill down on it would show that we got paid here whereas this item if we drill down on it would show that we gave up on the customer so that's the important difference between reversing this rather than just recording a debit to cash credit to bad debt expense if we look at the allowance method same type of activity we're going to reverse what we did and then we're going to record the normal transaction the only difference here being this item when we first recorded the write-off we debited the um, we debited <laughs> the allowance for doubtful accounts and credited the receivable now we're just reversing that so we debit uh, accounts receivable just as we did under the direct write-off but instead of crediting the bad debt now crediting the allowance just reversing it then we're back in good standing and we can do the same thing that we did in the direct write-off method or the same thing we would always do when we receive cash on account debiting cash and increasing cash and decreasing with a credit accounts receivable so note here no effect on the net income the allowance account then is going to go back up from 21 up by the nine to the 30,000 and that's because of course this individual uh, did pay us so we're not taking it 